So uh, just a short presentation on, not necessarily research, like uh, most of the presentations that have been done today, but basically a story on how the preserve came to be, the work we've been doing over the past three years, and how we manage invasive flora on our property. So I work for the Bahamas National Trust, and we manage the National Park System of the Bahamas. There are 27 national parks in protected areas, and Eleuthera is right around here. And the preserve is the first national park on the island of Eleuthera. Now, who are these two folks in this box? The uh, Leon Levy Native Plant Preserve is named after Leon Levy, and he was a uh, Wall Street financier, originally from New York. He and his wife uh, began visiting the Bahamas in the 1970s, subsequently built a home in Eleuther in the 80s, and fell in love with the beauty of the island. If you ever visit the Bahamas, you have to come to Eleuthera. Uh, it's, it's really a special place. And one of the things I enjoyed most about the Bahamas or Eleuthera in general was the traditional plant knowledge. They had persons who were caretakers for them who, when they would get sick or become ill, would say, hey, Mr. Levy, I'm going to go outside and boil you up some bush tea and that will knock that cold right out. And so they appreciated the, the belief in the traditional knowledge uh, of plants and bush medicine, as we call it, and the bush teas. They may not have been, uh, he may not have been uh, completely convinced that it worked, but he loved the idea that it was uh, knowledge that was being retained in the island. So he passed away in 2003, and when he did, uh, his wife, Shelby White, approached the Bahamas National Trust about building a space in his honor that would teach locals and visitors about uh, native plants, uh, promote the, uh, the planting of native plants, and also the traditional uses of plants. And so in March of 2011, the preserve was born. So just an idea of what our property is like. It's a 25 acre property located on the Banks Road, which is a coastal road on the Atlantic side of Eleuthera. Our trail system is about two miles in total, and we've gone through two phases of development. The first phase was Welcome Center, Education Pavilion, Education Program, Trail System, and actually we are just about to have a, a opening ceremony to reveal our phase two development, which was the addition of a, a lath house for plant propagation, a new freshwater uh, garden, and an edible history section, which tells the story of the Bahamas through what uh, the different waves of migration throughout history, what those people ate. So the Lucayans, Spanish, British, Africans, and of course the modern day influences on what we eat. So just to go back in time, so 2009 was the groundbreaking for the development of the preserve, and the first task that was there was cleanup. We needed to clean up. Of the 25 acres, about 22 of them were undisturbed. There was a, uh, an old dump on the property, and there was a road that ran through it, and there was a number of invasive species that we had to deal with, namely Casarina, uh, Luciana leucocephala, or Jumbe, Shinus, or the Brazilian pepper, and the jasmine vine. Uh, so first it was a broad sweep to get rid of as many of the invasives as we could. Uh, once that was completed, uh, it was the development of a trail system. Now, with the development of the trail system, is a very minimal approach. You know, we don't want to go through bulldozers. The site has a number of uh, interesting habitats uh, towards the, the, I guess, the more coastal side of our property. There's an old uh, dune there, which has a silver uh, thatch palm, or, excuse me, or cocothrinac shrubland. There's the dry broadleaf evergreen formation, or coppice, filled with nice orchids and bromeliads. And there was a mixed mangrove forest already there on the property. So, speaking of cleanup, uh, the mangrove area that I spoke about, where we're located along the Banks Road, uh, this was the beginning. And so that is an area that was completely covered with jasmine vine, invasive elephant grass, jumbe. And so after we uh, took out the plants, there was lots of litter there as well. Uh, so this is an old car that we pulled out of there. Uh, tons of bottles, uh, there's a refrigerator, a gas tank, you name it, it was in there. Um, after removing a lot of trash, we started to do a little bit of fine tuning. And once, being at the end of a mangrove system, once we started to remove the, the mud or the dirt, it naturally filled up. And this is what we ended up with. 
And you've heard the saying, build it and they will come. So we open up this nice body of fresh water, expose this fossilized coral that we found on the property. We build the waterfall. Of course, there are no naturally occurring waterfalls in the, in the Bahamas, but I like to consider that as naturally man-made. So the term, build it and they will come. So open up a nice big body of water. What's the first thing that's going to show up? Mosquitoes. So we became a mosquito factory, which wasn't pleasant for a while. But however, the mosquitoes then serve as a basis uh, for the rest of the life to start to fall into line. The dragonflies came along, uh, the shorebirds. So on different days, you would see the black uh, leg still, black neck still, uh, coots and other ducks and uh, could go down the list, you know, egrets and so forth and so on. And then one day we had uh, two of our native freshwater turtles crawl out of the mangroves, just two of them. And in a matter of time, I guess they liked what we did and they got their mojo going and we had an explosion of young turtles. And so that area is a, is a we like to show it off as an area of restoration. And every year the turtles boom and they, they love their new home. So as I said earlier, we opened in March of 2011 in this photo on the far left is the executive director of the Bahamas National Trust, Eric Carey. To the right of him, Shelby White, the benefactress for the Leon Levy Foundation. Uh, to her right, Gregory Long, president of New York Botanical Gardens. And to his right, the president of the Bahamas National Trust, Neil Seeley. So what do we want to, why was the preserve built? So the primary purpose was to talk about bush medicine, talk about how we use plants to heal various ailments. So along our trails, we've, we have the bush medicine theme, which we have about eight, or well now nine, um, display beds labeled by ailment. And in them, you'll find the plants that were traditionally used to treat those ailments, whether it's by a tea, direct application, a bath, chewing the plant, whatever it was. Uh, it's clearly labeled and there for persons to see and learn about. The next important thing was our education program. So in developing phase one of the preserve, we really took great lengths to create a sound education program that will reinforce the principles of native plant conservation, traditional uses of plants, and so forth. So our education uh, program was synced and in line with the Ministry of uh, Education's curriculum for agriculture and biology, so students would <coughs> would learn lessons in school or in the class and be able to come to the preserve and have hands-on interactions with uh, the lessons that they were learning. And this is an example of two of our, our guides. Along the uh, education line, uh, one of the most important uh, uh, aspects of the work of the Bahamas National Trust is youth development and capacity building and education and awareness. So the Discovery Club is our youth arm of the Bahamas National Trust, kind of like Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts where they go through a badge process and each of the badges is a particular area where they will learn. So whether it's bugs or marine life or <coughs> climatology. And this is them at their graduation ceremony uh, pledging their allegiance to the environment of the Bahamas. Excuse me. So just to talk a little bit about further the development of the preserve, uh, we've been going through the natural history of the preserve. The botany uh, was done by Dr. Ethan Freed. He was the original botanist at the preserve who laid out the original trail system. This is some of the uh, plants, some of the pretty flowers we have on the property. We've also been doing our uh, entomology on the property. And we've had a professor from the College of the Bahamas doing collections for us. And it's a breakdown of some of the uh, in insects that we found and some of their uh, relative abundance. Uh, of note is that during our collection exercises, we have potentially discovered a new genus of catedid or grasshopper, which we are currently doing some DNA work on. And uh, hopefully, it's, well, it's definitely a new species, maybe a new genus. So uh, stay in tune. We'll let you know what's happening. Our herpetology. Some of you in the room probably are familiar with Joe Wazalewski. Uh, great herpetologist, has done a lot of work for the Bahamas National Trust. We've had him down doing our, uh, our herp studies, and this is just a breakdown of what he's found so far. And one of our newer additions uh, to, as a part of our phase two uh, project was putting in a weather station to uh, measure temperature, humidity, pressure, wind speed, direction, light rainfall. Uh, 
We've also put a sensor in the forest where we are now uh, putting in permanent plots to do tree tagging and has a, have it as an internship program for tertiary students. Uh, that data, the weather data, we're currently syncing to our website to make available to the public for free. And so we'll have a live weather widget to show you the, the weather in Eleuthera, where we are, and uh, access to our database of weather data. So it's soon up. St stay tuned again. All right, so back to what we're here for, invasive flora. So that area where I talked about earlier, the uh, wetland was filled with this jumbe, uh, sorry, jasmine vine, which, yeah, it smells like jasmine, and it's a nice pretty flower, and it's great. Not really. Uh, it's a very woody, hardy vine that, that overcrowds the trees, it chokes out the trees, and so to remove this, it's not as simple as going up to a vine and pulling it out of a tree. It's also, we have the approach to preserve no chemicals. You know, we don't spray for insects, we don't use any herbicides. Everything is by hand. So managing the jasmine vine is an ongoing process and that requires you cut it out of the root to kill the rest of the plant but also digging up the root. Um, another strategy is trying to create a, a border around the preserve of jasmine free. Uh, a lot of our neighbors that have disturbances, tons of jasmine vine, the birds come along and drop the seeds and we have a constant replenishment of the jasmine vine. The jumbe loves to grow in disturbed areas. If you clear out a uh, plot of land, this is probably the first one that will pop back. Uh, it's useful in the sense that goats love it. So goat farmers, they would harvest it and feed it to their goats. Another hardy plant, you just can't cut it out. Uh, it'll spring back up. You need to dig up the root. Brazilian pepper, or shyness, is another problematic species. Grows uh, in our wetland. When it comes to this plant, relatively easy to remove, but very prolific seeder, and you should never, never, ever, ever take it out when it's seeding, because you're just gonna spread seeds all over, and you're literally gonna have thousands of Brazilian pepper uh, seedlings popping up. And now to the, the main one, uh, Casarina, one of our most problematic species in the Bahamas. And for us at the preserve, we had very large trees that we removed in the initial stages. Uh, but as time went on, we found ways to utilize this tree and just to show you some examples of what we do. So we go out to areas that are invaded with Casarina and we use it for mulch. We have two miles of trail system, so depending on rainfall, definitely once a year, but sometimes twice a year, we have to do a complete uh, revamping of our trail system in terms of mulch. That's a very heavy harvesting exercise. Right now in about week six of uh, two chainsaws, four other guys and a chipper every day going out and collecting uh, Casarina. And this is just what our product looks like. It's a pretty high quality mulch. We, when harvesting the Casarina, we're mindful to not harvest seeding Casarina. And we also uh, remove the branches before putting them into our chipper. Uh, we also would leave the pile of mulch to sit for about a week or two. And as the, uh, the pile starts to break down, it heats up and that would kill any seeds left in the pile. So this is just an example of what our mulch looks like. Benches, so not all Casarina trees are skinny. So some of the larger trees, uh, we have a uh, wood miser sawmill that belongs to the Bahamas National Trust. And during Hurricane Irene, there were a lot of large trees that fell over. We went into the communities to help with the removal of the trees using our chainsaws and tractor. And then we had all this wood left over. So we said, you know what, send a mill over and we'll cut it up and we'll utilize it. And so through Hurricane Irene, it opened our eyes to the, the possibilities. And we fulfilled our needs for benches at the preserve by utilizing the sawmill. We also use it for signage. So our trail signs, uh, we also purchase a, a router with a lettering system. So we do all of our signs in-house, wanting to be as self-sufficient as possible. Uh, when you come to the preserve, you get a plant guide, and in that plant guide, we have currently about 200 species that are labeled by common name and scientific name. So all of our numbers are made from Casarina as well. Aesthetics. So this is a uh, sketch of one of our newer features for phase two. It was an old cistern that we were to convert into a freshwater wetland. And if you look at the picture, this is what the artist drew. Now, see the thing about designers, they can, they draw the, draw the picture and then they just hand it off and they say, make it happen. 
All right. So in this picture, you see these nice uh, renditions of casserina trees that will serve as bird perches in our new wetland. So this is what we started with. This was the cistern that we met on the property, which, used, which was used to uh, supply water to a farm about 50 years ago. Uh, near where I live in Rainbow Bay, I noticed these nice dead casserina trees on the side of the road. That area is pretty uh, heavily hit by salt spray, so these trees were dead but, but cured. They weren't, they weren't rotting. So we went in and we had our guys with our chainsaws say we're going to take these trees out. Took them to the preserve. This was not an easy job, by the way. This was very stressful. Uh, this is us in progress of bringing in our casserina trees, and this was our final product. And so we've converted that shell to a freshwater garden which will be used to showcase the native freshwater plants of the Bahamas. And we're currently going through other islands and collecting freshwater species to show off in our new wetland. Going a bit further with Casarina, very useful. Uh, education, so once again, our education program is very important to us. And what you see in the top two pictures are uh, students from the Governor's Harbor Primary and the Deep Creek Middle School. Both, we went into the schools to create a nature trail to highlight the native species. And so we brought pieces of Casarina that we had cut at the preserve for them to paint on the labels for the different native plants, which I thoroughly enjoyed. We also had a B&T volunteer, uh, Mr. Robin Hardy, a uh, very experienced woodworker, very experienced with his lathe, uh, came down to Eleuthera. We visited the high school, went to the woodworking class, showed them how to turn pens using various types of wood, one of which was a casserina. And so here's one of the students very happy with her new casserina pen. Community outreach. Uh, Eleuthera right now is branding itself as a heritage-based tourism island. We don't have big fancy hotels, we don't want it. Uh, what we value is the, the value of local knowledge and the importance of those heritage sites. So there was a heritage trail being set up across Eleuthera and the preserve, we are happy to be involved with this process. So going across the island, we highlighted these heritage points using signs made from Casarina that we routed on our property and it was a very wonderful experience going out and seeing the island and making these these points visible. Uh, one more uh, way we've used the, the Cass Arena is as a part of the Heritage Trail is a, a Luthera Bench program. So one of our renowned Bahamian artists, uh, Antonius Roberts, uh, came down to the preserve. Uh, we selected about five of the best woodworking students on the island to teach them the methods of making these benches. And they came to the preserve, they spent about two weeks with us you know, pumped out somewhere between 20 to 30 of these benches, which are then distributed across the island at these various heritage sites. Uh, those woodworking students are then encouraged themselves to now, when they graduate, to go on and continue this business. I'll just say personally that since we began to build these benches, the interest in purchasing them has shot through the roof, and it's there's definitely a market there. And so. Whereas we had to preserve for more about education and awareness, and as much as I would love to build benches and sell them, that's not my job. So we encourage members of the general public, if you want to learn how to use a sawmill, come to the preserve. If you want to learn how to make benches, come to the preserve. We'll teach you, we'll show you, we'll give you the tools, and you can go forth, be fruitful and multiply. So just to wrap up, uh, our lath house that I was talking about would serve as a propagation house for native species. And so this is where we would run our greening programs or our dirty lab with the students. And in the Bahamas, there is not a, a wide availability of native trees. There are not many native plant nurseries in the Bahamas. You can find seedlings, but if you want to buy a 15-foot mahogany, you have to go to South Florida, which we share much of our native vegetation with. So our lath house uh, will serve as this propagation center, research center, where we'll investigate how to truly propagate the natives. What's best from cuttings, what's best from seedings, and get, uh, build, basically build up a stock of native plants so when students come and visit the preserve, that they'll be able to take a seedling home. This will then support greening programs in the community and really help to, to give us that extra edge. You know, we tell people we want you to plant natives, forget the foreign exotics, stick to what we got, because what we got is really beautiful. I love our native plants. Uh, I speak for the trees. And uh, pretty much that's about it. <laughs>